This is Ultra Gaiden, a series where I take a look at movies and shows with a tangential relation to the Ultraman franchise. And this one is, uh, certainly interesting. War of the God Monsters is a South Korean kaiju film that goes as far as utilizing footage from various Tsuburaya superhero shows, largely including Ultraman productions. This film was released in 1984, which means some of the shows being represented here are as old as 11 to 18 years of age, at the time the movie came out. This only scratches the surface of how weird this film is. The reason why we even have this film in HD is thanks to, or in this case can be blamed on, SRS Cinema, who I must say is one of the strangest boutique labels I've ever seen in business. They do releases of crappy shot on video films for 30 bucks, and lumped in with them are releases of obscure genre films like this one. The extremely obscure South Korean film Space Monster Wang Magui saw its first home video release through them too. Truly a film in the same category as Ghost Shark Exorcist Reckoning or whatever other no-budget crap this label distributes. I'm not actually sure if the footage from the Ultraman shows was used with permission. I don't own the movie physically, so I don't know if there are any special features that clarify anything. I'll be writing this review with the good faith that it was licensed, though. It would be incredibly strange and dangerous for SRS Cinema to release something like this and not expect Tsuburaya's hammer to come down. Then again, they put out Dragon Lizard Lord Super Monsters, which has very obvious facsimiles of Godzilla and pals. So maybe they just fear no god. This film was apparently released in Japan at some point, and Considering Tsuburaya was in dire straits at the time due to the failure of Ultraman 80, maybe they would have been more willing to license the footage to this otherwise low-budget production. The film also has the alternate title of The Flying Monster, which is way less specific than War of the God Monsters. I mean, there are two flying monsters in the movie, but there is way more than just one monster, you know? But yeah, in this movie we've got Bemstar, Verochrone, Sigarath and Simons, my beloved Terochillus, and Pestar. They also leave in footage of each respective show's attack team too. They try to match these with footage of generic jets attacking, but it's not very convincing. Even footage from Fireman is repurposed. Wow, now that's a show I need to talk about when it gets fully subbed. This is the highest quality footage ever released of it too. But there's no way this show's getting a stateside Blu-ray release anytime soon. I'm getting specific with that wording because I want to tempt the laws of fate so that it actually happens right after I publish this video. Even footage from a Taiwanese film titled The Founding of the Ming Dynasty can be found here. You can tell the footage is squished to be in this movie's aspect ratio too. Oh, right, yeah, shit. This movie has a story, I forgot to talk about it, let's talk about it. So the plot of this one starts with a lady with incredibly poofy 80s hair going to meet with a professor, Dr. Lee, to become his housekeeper. She begins to form a connection with Lee's daughter, who's missing a mother figure. All the while, the professor is investigating the existence of giant dinosaurs. He's a bit behind, it seems like Matt from Return of Ultraman is already ahead of him there. People call the professor crazy, even though there's proof of a giant monster showing up. The movie already showed a scene of Bemstar attacking an oil field. It seems like more people would agree with the professor after that. Maybe they just didn't see it. If that scene wasn't there, I feel like the build-up would have been more believable. If you look closely at the professor's wall, you can even see pictures of the film's monsters before they even appear. It could be artist interpretations of what the monsters would look like if they were real, but nah. These are photos of the ones in the film. They didn't even care. Anyways, it's revealed that the housekeeper is actually a reporter, looking to publicize the professor's findings. It's all honestly a bit boring for the first 50 or so minutes. The professor keeps finding evidence of dinosaurs, the reporter lady feigns sympathy by hiring someone to attack her to keep herself employed, it's a long story. I'm actually still a little confused about what's actually happening there, it's very convoluted. The little girl has nightmarish visions of Verochrone from Ultraman Ace, 
and eventually more Ultraman stock footage descends upon Korea and attacks for real. It honestly feels like it all interrupted a mediocre soap opera. Despite spending more than half the movie building up to it, the monster stuff feels very abrupt. I'll fucking say. Very nonplussed reaction after all that. Hell, when she sees Seamons for the first time, she seems weirdly unaffected by it. Very strange direction here. One of the movie's first big action scenes is this stock footage sequence with Veracrone, and it's eventually revealed to be a nightmare the daughter is having. I mean, this one having finger missiles was supposed to be a sign that it wasn't real, I guess? But monsters like Pestar are still in the movie, so it's still kinda believable for Veracrone to exist. <laughs> Yes, those are the sounds Pestar makes. Actually incredible. The doctor tending to her then insists she's having a fever after being infected by... dinosaur bones. Yeah, the ones the professor has in his house. He's seriously suggesting that they have some virus in them that's making her sick. It's been millions of years, my guy. I doubt whatever bacteria is in these things is still active. Who the hell made this guy a practicing doctor? One more thing before I forget about it, there's this scene during one of the destruction sequences where a couple wakes up to the monster attack, and they accidentally pack up a pillow instead of their baby, leaving it to die in the attack. This is not treated as a comedic thing. They never start a rescue attempt to save the baby. The film is just like, hmm, that's a bummer and moves on. Legitimately psychotic. Back on those noises Pestar was making, there were some strange sound design choices here. Was that an explosion or a tin can falling over? The monster from Fireman, Dorigon, inexplicably makes monkey noises here too. This film was taking itself so seriously before the monsters showed up, is it being goofy on purpose? It's so inexplicable, it's hilarious. They also used some music from Ultraman. I recognize that stinger from one of Toru Fuyuki's soundtracks. If you listen closely, you can even hear the train warning noises from the scene they ripped it from. They also show Pestar dying. It's almost as if that was the only monster whose footage didn't involve Ultraman defeating it or something. Yeah, the other monsters who show up in the film don't get a send-off of any kind. In the context of the film, there's no giant superhero to stop them, so they just... stop appearing. There's more than a bit of a size discrepancy with the bones Dr. Lee has, too. If these are supposed to be dinosaur bones, then the bones Lee finds are way, way smaller than the real things. Maybe they were hit by a shrink ray millions of years ago or something. Maybe it's like the Monsterverse, where these giant dinosaurs existed separately in the Hollow Earth. Or maybe it's just a bad movie with horribly inaccurate scaling issues. <laughs> Kid, your father is a paleontologist, or archaeologist, or whatever. What do you mean by, what does prehistoric age mean? Has he never told you? God, this movie is just so fucking weird. This was intended to be a theatrical production of sorts. A low-budget one, sure, but it came out in the mid-80s. Repurposing footage from the 60s and 70s, from shows intended for television, with the scope and miniature and suit quality that would come of that, the expectations are obviously a little different. Sigurath Tsunami is still incredibly impressive, though. I will say, it is a bit weird to see this footage from much more light-hearted shows here. War of the God Monsters is comparably melodramatic. It takes itself dead seriously. The film stops to show the grieving villagers after the monster attack like it's Godzilla 54. The professor's daughter is always crying about not having a mother. There's a lot of emotion in this film. 
I'd feel sympathetic if the filmmaking here wasn't so distractingly bad, or the pacing and plotting so tedious. For as much kaiju action as there is in the final act, the rest of the film is surprisingly boring. Superaya Productions' whimsical spectacle is the highlight here, and you can just watch those shows to experience it that way instead. There is fun to be had here, its internal logic can be head-scratching at times, and being an Ultraman fan provides a broader perspective on just how far the extent of the reused footage goes. And that flaky, non-Ultraman-like sound design especially adds another strange layer. But I can't in good conscience recommend the whole thing. I was kinda bored through most of it. It's certainly fascinating that it exists, but actually watching it is a mild exercise. You're better off watching individual clips on YouTube. But yeah, War of the God Monsters? Not a great film. Moving on. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Uh, I want to keep this one short, so here is a readout of the top patrons who helped make videos like this one possible. Gazner, Sampai, Orz, Golden Made Me an Ultraman Fan, Swoosh McJuice, Navek15, Jacob Hinch, Dude Bro, Griffith J. Hertenstein, Alistair Gilmore, Seamus Kelly, Anonymous Euronymous1349, Fujoshi Urinal, Ryman Ruin, Mulan Nguyen, Ultraman Taro vs. Leo, Irrelevant402, Hey I'm Mooney, Krazak53, Komen, Queer Kaiju, Chronicler Waba, Alcoholic Alligators, Ryan Santa Cruz, Avok Robot, The Antagonist, Richard Siavardon, It's God Z, Big Odilo, CMG, Red Comet Harry, and Marpzilla. Thank you all very much.